Michael Bay gets back to basics, but is it too little, too late? You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Pain and Gain. You just can't kidnap a guy and take his things. That's so illegal. Well, sure we can. Victor Kershaw is a criminal prick who deserves bad stuff to happen to him. We go through with this, nobody gets hurt, right? <laughs> oh man, we snatch him. There he is! We grab him, he signs a few signatures. We give him a protein shake. He doesn't even know what happened. I watched a lot of movies, Paul. I know what I'm doing. While it might be hard to imagine these days, there was a time when Michael Bay was considered a top-notch director. Granted, this was a long time ago in the 1990s when the Wonder Kid music video and commercials director had back-to-back -back hits with Bad Boys and The Rock, two films still regarded to this day as classic action films. Then, while Bay's artistic credibility seemed to take as many hits as Pearl Harbor thanks to his cheesy depiction of that dark day, Hollywood stood by him as his films continued to turn huge profits at the box office. I mean, let's keep it real. Steven Spielberg picked Michael Bay to direct the first Transformers movie for a reason. And sure enough, Bay continued to deliver at the box office. So far, the franchise has grossed over $2.5 billion worldwide. Yet while Paramount and DreamWorks might be getting barrels of green paper, red blood has been spilt. Both Shia LaBeouf and Megan Fox saw their careers made and destroyed over the course of the first three movies, with Fox being fired for the third film and LaBeouf not returning for the upcoming fourth film. But while LaBeouf might still be on a downward spiral, which he seems to be personally fueling, looks like Fox, who infamously compared Bay to Hitler, is once again on good terms with the director-producer, as he recently cast her as the female lead in his Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles reboot. Or as some have joked, that's actually his revenge. See, Michael Bay movies have become jokes, and perhaps even worse, audiences don't trust him anymore. It's almost as if Bay won the battle but lost the war. That means it's time to tap into the reserves, in this case, the true story of the Sun Jim Gang. Bay had wanted to make this film a few years ago, but had to honor his commitment to the third Transformers. But now, while prepping Transformers 4, he was able to squeeze in the 25 million flick. Wait a minute, a Michael Bay movie made for a mere 25 million dollars? How is such a thing possible? By Bay, Mark Wahlberg and Dwayne Johnson all agreeing to make the film for no money up front in exchange for a big chunk of the box office gross. And it turns out Bay and Wahlberg also got something more, a lasting partnership. Bay enjoyed working with the Ted star so much that he selected him to take over the Transformers franchise post LaBeouf. However, while Bay and company can certainly be said to gain, those who knew the real-life victims of the Sun Jim Gang say this movie is causing them pain. After all, the Sun Jim Gang's crimes were so heinous that two members currently sit on death row in Florida. Is that really appropriate material for an action comedy? I think Pain and Gain is a very interesting and complex film. Uh, you know, if you saw my trailer review, you know I was very excited about the movie. I just couldn't wait for it to come out. I thought it looked fantastic. Uh, and I planned to review it at the Calgary Expo, where I was this weekend. Uh, however, it wasn't playing in downtown Calgary, so I had to wait to see it until I got back. Uh, and while I was waiting to see it, I saw that the news come in that it didn't do very well at the box office, that it got a C-plus from CinemaScore, and also that a number of you didn't like it. I saw, particularly in movie math this week, I saw the comments come in right before I went to see it. Uh, the people had walked out of the theater and really disliked it. And I think to some degree, from what I could tell from comments, found it offensive. I have to say, I've seen the movie, and I don't know if it's, because, if it's partially because I had such low expectations going in after hearing all that stuff, but I really liked it. I really liked what Michael Bay was trying to say about uh, the American dream and you know trying to take shortcuts. It, to me, it was almost like it was a great companion. It's a great companion piece to Scarface. Uh, you know, I thought there were a lot of similarities between the two movies, and it's even referenced in this film. Mark Wahlberg's character says, you know, Tony Montana is like his personal hero, and it was interesting to see. You know, you have this character who all of his heroes are fictional characters. You know, where their problems and their rise to success is neatly happens in like two hours, two or three hours. And you know, I think that was that was supposed to be saying something. However, at the same time, while I enjoyed the movie, I could totally see how a lot of people would find it offensive. And I would wonder if Michael Bay had tested this film in front of audiences, because I think that maybe I, I would. I would guess that Michael Bay and the studio is surprised with the response. But at the same time, I guess when you know when you you know hindsight is 2020, you know the Rock's character is a, is a religious character and I think that people might find some of the comments that are said in the film offensive. So it's such, it, I mean they're they're trying to tell a true story and one of my favorite things about the, and it is a true story. One of my favorite things about the film is I'd say about 3 quarters in uh, if you, you'll know the scene if you saw it, The Rock is grilling, and they, they freeze frame, and on the bottom it says, this is still a true story at this point. 
like they want you to know they didn't embellish it because it's such an absurd true story you know that you know they even say you know truth is stranger than fiction and this is very strange and bizarre but it really happened and it's so absurd that i think michael bay made the creative choice to go with that absurdity I liked it. I mean, I really liked the soundtrack. I thought it looked, the film looked fantastic. I really, I really liked it. I thought, as I said, great companion piece to Scarface. It was like a 1990s crime film, you know, kind of like a perverse American dream. And it worked for me, but I can see where it wouldn't work for a lot of people. Uh, but I would like to say that I think if you were offended by this film, at least know that, as I said, I don't think Michael Bay intended that. I don't think Mark Wahlberg intended that. I think everybody making this film was working very hard to make a good quality film that was, you know, it was controversial, but I think they wanted that contra that controversy to spark conversation, and instead a lot of people just decided to turn and walk away. Which, you know, and that's, you know, you roll the dice. You know, Oliver Stone has had hit and misses, and I thought this was, this was kind of like, I think Michael Bay seemed to be taking a few plays out of Oliver Stone's playbook. I mean, there were similar, I felt there were similarities. I almost feel this is like natural born killers crossed with Dumb and Dumber. And as I said, again, that worked for me, but you know, you roll the dice, it just it hasn't worked out here. Uh, I think this is a niche film. I think it was marketed as a mainstream film, also especially with the cast in it. So, you know, this is like true romance. It's like a, if, if Quentin Tarantino had made this film, I think Quentin Tarantino has a little bit of a better, you know, a more deft touch when it comes to satire and probably would have done a better job with this film. And I think he has a better idea of what, of the audience, uh, mentality, the audience mindset. I think Michael Bay only made the movie from behind the camera and didn't think about how it would play to the audience. And, you know, that's something you have to do. Michael Bay might have overstretched, you know, overreached here. But you can't fault someone for trying. And I think, you know, I was really impressed with the acting in the film, particularly from The Rock. I've never seen him in a role like this, and I thought he did a really nice job. So I would say that if you have, if you have seen Pain and Gain, again, don't be offended. Or if you are offended, you know, I hope you don't take it personally, and I wouldn't hold anything against anyone who made the movie. Uh, if you haven't seen the film, be aware that you probably will find it offensive. Uh, but go into it, and I hope, you know, maybe think about the things that I've said, and maybe you might be able to take a step back. But, and also I think this is a good lesson for anyone who's an aspiring filmmaker, that, you know, you really have to test your material. Uh, with audiences and you know, have use people as a sounding board and you really have to try and think about how it might be perceived by uh, you know the mainstream and you know how it will come across because you know nobody wants to, no, nobody wants to offend anyone with their work you know I mean except for a very small group of artists but in the in general you want your you want your work to be accepted to some degree and you know it's unfortunate this happened but again I personally liked it a lot. So that's my review of Pain and Gain. Uh, write your own thoughts down below what you thought of the film. And thank you for coming to be on the trailer for these, you know, reviews like this, trailer reviews. I have some trailer reviews coming out later today. And I uh, hope you'll subscribe. Bye.